Today we're going to talk about how to install the EZ5160 on the Big Tree Tech SKR version 3 EZ. So I need to point out a couple of things about these steppers. First of all, this is the X stepper, the Y stepper, the Z stepper, E0 stepper, and E1 stepper. Now, they have a different power supply switch that you can do with the jumper to change the power to here. Now, the power generally runs from 12 to 48 volts here, but we're going to be actually using the PSU power to demonstrate this, so I'm not going to change this. But you can consult the manual for the link that I leave in the description if you so choose. Just remember to check the data sheet on the stepper that you're using. So to install this stepper, which already has built in the actual cooling fins on it, we're going to take the label side, point it towards the power supply, and insert it. So you're just going to push down like so. That should put it in place. Next, what we're going to do is we're actually going to connect the cabling for the NEMA stepper motor right here so that we can drive the motor. We're also going to connect the power supply that's currently disconnected from the actual power so it's not energized. So as you can see for the PSU power supply I'm just going to slide it into here and tighten these down and if you watched my very first tutorial then you can see how to mark this correctly. So it's voltage and ground, but it's done by the color that I marked on top so I can actually confirm that I'm hooking it up correctly. Now, we actually need to use an end stop for this stepper. So I'm gonna show you real quick what those look like. So if we go over to the desktop, you can see that we're gonna use the X minimum, which is right here. So we need to know the pins. It's five volts ground, and it's also the PC for the actual uh, signal pin, pardon me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over to the workbench. I'm gonna take the actual connector, which you can see is voltage for red, black for ground, and green for signal. So I'm going to place that in there and we're going to use this to actually stop the actual uh, movement of the axis with the end stop to verify that it works. So next what we're going to do is I've already placed the USB micro SD card in the computer. So that's already set. So I removed it from here. So we're going to go over the desktop on the computer and we're going to set this up. So I'm going to click on the Explorer, then I'm going to go to Open Folder, I'm going to click on Downloads. I already downloaded and extracted the Marlin 2.1, so we're going to go in the first folder, then the second folder, then select Folder. Inside of here, we're going to have to go to the Marlin folder, the Source folder, the Core folder, and then Boards.h. Inside here, we'll search on SKR underscore V3. And that'll bring us to the easy version of the board. So we'll copy that. And then we'll minimize core and source. But keep in mind that we have to know what the MCU is, which in this case is STM32H743VG. That's the big black chip on the center of your board, which I'll show you real quick. So if we go over here, this is what I'm referring to in the writing on it. This may change in the future depending upon shortages of chips. So keep that in mind if it does change. So let's go over to the configuration.h file, search on motherboard, and inside here we're gonna have to change the ramps so we'll highlight that all and paste what we just took from the boards.h file. Then we need to change the serial port to negative one. That's gonna be for our board. Normally you would use something like maybe this one in other people's tutorials or files, but these are interchangeable. So if we were to use an actual display, we could remove the comment with a control forward slash and change that to one. 
but we're currently not using that, so we're not gonna worry about it. And this is the default speed. So now we have to set up the stepper, so I'm gonna do a Control F and search on A4988. And here's our X stepper, so we need to select the TMC5160, so we're gonna copy that and paste it over this. Next, what we're gonna do is search on steps underscore per, and this is our actual steps per. This is the default they use in the file. Some other people's configurations may vary, but I'm gonna show you how to work with this, and if you wanna use the RepRap calculator or something else to compute it, you can, but you're gonna to have to calibrate anyways, so it's just best to leave it alone. So, you can do that with a calibration cube, by the way. We're gonna go over to Configuration Advanced for a second. We're gonna search on 800, and this will take us eventually to the X configuration. And we need to change the resistor sense. It's actually not 0.11, it's 0 0.075 for this particular stepper. That's a big step most people miss. And we're gonna turn on debugging for the moment. So I'm gonna do a control F and search on TMC underscore debug. This will give us the actual ability to modify this. Hang on, I misspelled TMC. There we go. So I'm gonna do a control forward slash to remove the comment. Then I'll find the second one right here and do control forward slash again. And the reason for doing that is so that we have the debug codes for M122 to check our setup. Now we also have to enable the TMC use software spy. So it's a spy communication or serial peripheral interface that we're looking for. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna search on that by saying SW underscore spy. That'll bring us right to it. And I'll do control forward slash. And we're not specifying pins like we normally do. This is just pointing to the file, which is actually in here. If you go to source pins, find your chipset, which is the STM32H7, and it's the common. Both these files currently point to common, but have no different changes except for username. So that is the file it normally points to, and then it points to the values right in here. So that's automatically done for us. So now that we've got that configured and we've got the TMC debugging, which you can disable after you know that it's working, you can go back in here, comment it out, and then rebuild. But we need to change the actual end stops there's an issue where I need to flip the logic of it. So I'm going to do a control F and I'm going to search for end stop. And hopefully I'll find it on the next one. There it is. And then down here, I'm going to flip the logic for the actual uh, message that we received. Normally now it will show up on this board as triggered when we have an end stop connected. So we're going to change this to true so it'll say open. The other thing you can do, but I'm not gonna do in this particular tutorial, is you can invert the access. And it's gonna take me a second to get to this. Okay, down here, if your access, in this case, is traveling the direction that's not normally in the direction of your end stop, you can change the false to a true or the true to a false, depending upon which way it's going. But for now, I'm just gonna leave this alone because I want it to travel in this direction. So to set this up to actually build, I'm gonna minimize the uh, pins file for a second and the source. Then I'm gonna go over to platformio.ini and we need to update the default environment, which is our chipset. So we're gonna go to the INI folder, find our chipset, which is STM32H7. And then down here, we'll highlight our default environment and copy that. Notice how it's for both of the boards. Then we're gonna minimize this. We'll click on platform IO, highlight Mega 2560, and paste it right there. 
Then what I normally do is I do a clean, which is the little garbage can down here. And that should clean out the previous build that was in .pio up here. Now I'm going to click the checkbox to actually build. This may take a few moments. It may fail on the very first time or at least older builds used to. So what you would do is click the build button a second time. And if it failed the second time, then you'd find the first red indication in here. And that actual error needs to be corrected. Anything after that might be a cascade of errors. Anything that's yellow though is actually a warning and you can ignore that. Also, I want to take a moment to thank my patrons for helping me offset the costs for this tutorial as well as the people on PayPal. And I will place a thank you note at the end of the tutorial. So there's going to be a couple more steps that we're going to have to do as soon as this finishes, but we can watch it in here under the build folder. And we're looking for firmware.elf then firmware.bin. That will mean we've completed our actual build. So you can see it right here. So I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna reveal in File Explorer. Now we have the E drive for the micro SD already installed. So you can see that firmware.cur was the last successful build that we had. So I'm gonna go back over here, right click, and I'm gonna send that to the E drive. Now you can see that they're both there. If the actual firmware.bin is successful, it will be renamed to this file. If you ever really want to reload this on another similar or exact system, you would rename it to firmware.bin again, and then it will get renamed back to cur if it's successful. So let's pop that out, put it in the actual drive. So I'm going to take out the SD card. I'm going to slide it into here. And then I'm going to power the board with the PSU power. So I'm going to plug this in. You may hear a beep in a moment. That means it's successful. And we just heard that. So we're going to go over to Pronerface. And inside Pronerface, you can see that we don't have our board specified. So to check that, we can click on the desktop for a moment, type Device Manager, and Enter. And then it'll pop up on your screen and you can check to see what it is. In this case, it's number seven. So it might be in the drop down over here, which it is. If it is not, you can highlight that and add it. So I'm going to click on connect and you can see that the printer is now online. So what we need to check right now is the actual end stops. So I'm going to type M119 and enter. And you can see that the one that we changed is now open. So I'm going to click it with my finger and do the command a second time. Now you can see it's triggered and if I let go and click again, it says open. So we're all good there. So let's try moving the access 10 millimeters. So that looks good. Now let's try moving back 10 millimeters and that's good. So now we're going to test the actual homing. So I'm going to actually hold this on here. Normally it's mounted to the actual um, printer. So let's test this. It might work the first time and it's going the other direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to invert the direction. So I'm going to power this off for a second. Let it discharge. I'm going to take this and make it go the opposite way by spinning it. I'll put this back in the center and I'll plug this back in so we can test it. So it should go this way now. That's another way that you can deal with it other than invert. So I'll do a disconnect, reconnect, double check the end stop real quick. That's good. Now we'll do a home and hopefully it'll go in the right direction. This might take more than one try, but let's see what happens. So it may have failed. So I didn't have it in the right place. So I'll have to disconnect. I know this looks difficult. Normally I have it mounted. I'm going to have to power down, power it back up, move this over to the center and we'll do this again. So it needs to be over a little bit more. I'll connect and I'll try and home. So 
As you can see, it does work. I just needed to get the actual end stop in the correct position. So at this moment, I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to watch. And please like and subscribe and take care.